Well, as a start, uh, my name is Luis Cañas Dia. Uh, you can pronounce my, my first name, Luis. And uh, well, I'm a software engineer. I work with data. And I'm also uh, a Chaos contributor. Uh, Chaos, in case, in case you don't know it, is the, it stands for Community Health Analytics for Open Source Software. It is a, a project of the Linux Foundation. And uh, I love churros. I'm a Spaniard. I live in Madrid. So in case you, you are going to visit Spain in the next in the next weeks in the, during the summer, uh, I do recommend you to 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 try some some churros with chocolate, always with chocolate. Uh, they are not healthy at all. They are really unhealthy, but uh, I do love them. And um, I'm also a Viteria co-founder. So uh, I want to be honest and frank with you. Uh, Viteria is providing services to both to OSPOS and ISPOS. So I want to make this clear to, to avoid uh, misunderstandings. So let's start. And before we start, uh, I will show you some data. But before I show some, da some data to you, uh, let's start with uh, some advice from my side. Um, the question we, are, we will start using is, why do you need data? Um, let me tell the story of how we created Viteria uh, almost 11 years ago. We were very happy workers. We were delighted workers working working uh, at a university in Madrid. Uh, we were researching open source communities, which was really cool. We had super long coffee breaks, and uh, but someday uh, Stefano Mafuli, at that time community manager of OpenStack of the OpenStack Foundation, um, he wanted us to to analyze uh, the issue tracking system for for the OpenStack community, and we identified a business opportunity. And we decided to to start the company. It was 2012. Wow, I'm getting old. So uh, Stefano, uh, he did had a he had a, a clear idea about what he wanted to measure. And during my last ten years, I've been working. I've worked with people that also had a clear idea about the the data they they needed, um, and they also have hypotheses. But uh, the majority of people have no idea about uh, why they needed the data. And uh, I just want to, to, to highlight, to emphasize that uh, this is not bad. It is common. It is just the starting point of, of your journey with your journey with data. So, um, so why do you need data? Based on my experience, uh, most of you will need data to be able to, to, uh, to, to answer the question if, uh, of, if to be able to know if you are uh, accomplishing one of the goals your organization, your organization is, is pursuing. So let me change, replace this, this question with this one. What is your goal? And this is the question we're going to use as our North Star. And uh, in case you don't have answer, you don't have a clear goal, so, so you don't know what to measure, my advice is to not calculate metrics. Why? Because metrics need to be uh, defined in a top-down fashion. You cannot use a bottom-up approach because there are too many metrics. You are going to get lost. So, so you have to avoid that at any cost. This is why uh, we use the goal based on metric approach. I'm pretty sure that uh, Daniel and I also know that Georg talked about this, this methodology in the past. But, but uh, basically, um, with a GQM, goal based on metric, we identify a goal we want to we want to achieve as an organization and we want to 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 know if we are able to accomplish that goal in order to know that we need to answer some questions so we start defining the list of questions we need to answer in order to know if we are accomplishing that goal once we have the goal and the questions we start defining the metrics we need to answer those questions some of the metrics are not going to answer the questions but they may help us to to answer the questions what if you started without goals well, then I wish you good luck. And uh, uh, there is a there is a joke. Uh, well, it is the street light effect, but uh, in reality, it is a joke. And it goes like this: uh, a drunk man is searching for for something under a street light, and uh, a police officer sees the drunk man and asks him, "What are you doing?" The drunk the drunk man says, "I'm searching my keys because I lost them." And the police officer, obviously, he starts helping the the drunk man. After ten minutes. The police officer asks again, are you sure you, you lost your, your keys here? And the drunk man says, no, I lost them in the park. Uh, so the police officer uh, replies, why are you searching here? And the drunk man says, well, this is where the light is. 
So my advice here is, is to not be the drug man of the metrics of your organization. So that was my advice. We can start playing with the data. And we are going to use the same structure I've been mentioning. So we are going to use the gold question metric approach. So let's imagine that uh, we are part of our organization. And one of the goals of this organization is to break the silos. So the goal of our metrics is to give us information to understand if we are able if we are making any progress to, 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 break the, to break down those silos. So this is the goal. And let's uh, use a couple of, of, of questions as example. First question, are we having more teams collaborating than six months ago? We have to think about the questions. We don't need to think about the metrics yet, OK? Second question, how many silos do we have? Now. We have the goal. Remember, we have we want to break down the silos. We have two questions. First one is, um, are we having more teams collaborating than six months ago? The second question is, how many silos do we have? And then we can start defining some metrics. Again, the metrics may not answer the whole question, but they will help us to answer the question. So first uh, metric, um, active teams per kit repository. This metric is focusing only in the Git data set, which is something kind of easy, kind of, yeah, it is not complex. But uh, this time, instead of looking for committers, top contributors, et cetera, we want to know the active teams per Git repository, OK? And we, can, we are going to, so, to see this uh, in evolution over time to see if the situation is changing over the last 6 to 12 months. This is the first metric. Second one. Um, we're going to use a network graph to see how the collaboration is working between Git committers. Um, with this question, with this metric, sorry, what we want to, 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 to see is uh, we want to spot the silos. So at a glance, we want to see if some silos are, uh, how many silos we, um, there are, and um, how strong is the connection between the different teams? And for, for that, a network uh, graph is, 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 is pretty cool. So that being said, I'm going to start showing some data. So here we start with the demo. So now you should be seeing my uh, a dashboard. Do you see it? We can see it. Thanks, Luis. Thank you. So, uh, so this dashboard is, is part of the. This is part of the. I mean, it is running the Grimar Lab uh, product. But uh, uh, sorry, because I'm using the Viterja branding, because uh, I didn't have time to to run the 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 tool from the community the community version. The difference between Viterja Analytics and the community version is, I would say, that less than one hundred uh, less than than one percent, and everything both. Peter Genetics service and Peter Genetics, sorry, Peter Genetics and the and the Grimala product, both of them are open source, 100% open source. Okay, so what I'm doing here, uh, you can do it with the Grimala version. So um, here we have a heat map, and in the y-axis we have uh, different repositories. Okay, those are Git repositories. We are studying the Git commits, but from a different uh, point of view. Um, the x-axis shows the time and the color, the darker the color, the more teams are active during a time frame. Okay, so uh, by default, it is using week. Yeah, it is split by week. So the darker the color, the more teams we have collaborating in this, in this project. We are not, uh, we are not having, uh, we are not taking into account the number of contributions per, per, per unit or team. We just want to know with this view if there are repositories mainly owned by a single team or shared uh, between uh, among different teams. Okay. So, uh, for instance, uh, this one, Grima Lab Sorting Hat. By the way, I'm using fake data. Well, I'm using data from random open source communities. So this is why you may see some repositories that you may know. Okay, And instead of having teams, uh, I'm mentioning here teams, but I do, uh, well, the information I have is from organizations. We can do the same thing with teams. Okay, So the, the approach uh, supports that, and it is possible. But for, the, for, for preparing something uh, quickly, uh, I didn't have the time to, to create fake names for teams. So you may see names of, of, of uh, organizations instead of teams. Um, 
So we have here a rep, our repository, and for this repository, we can see that only one team is 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 the one contributing to this one. Okay, but in any case, well, this may see an irrelevant uh, repository, so maybe it is not a critical component. What we can do with Grimar Lab with this user interface is to uh, filter. Uh, this is this user interface is using, is using Open Search. Open Search is really cool to to dig into the data, and you can filter in and filter out by almost everything. So uh, let me let's imagine that, that we have three components that are key components for our organization, and we want to focus on these three components to see if there are more uh, more activity from different teams in the last six months. So I'm going to filter by three repositories as an example. So, in the Grimar Lab, uh, in the Grimar Lab documentation, we have the data model documentation. So you can do these things on your own. I'm going to filter by a couple of repositories like Open Search, for instance, um, or blah, 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 maybe uh, Modred. Okay. So I'm, I'm applying a filter, and I'm going to name this filter Key Components. So those are the key components of my fake organization. Okay, I didn't mention this, but we are having we are seeing the, the information for the last 12 months. There is a, a time selector here on top right, and here we can play with the with the time frame. So at a glance, the collaboration between in these two repositories uh, is happening between between different teams, but not happening in the third repository. Okay, you want to see only the last six months, we can filter here by the last six months and it is going to be updated. Okay, so for instance, uh, we have issues in the third repository because we are not having more than one team collaborating, but the others are progressing. So we could say, okay, we are getting some results in the first two, in the first two components, not in the third one. So, so uh, we may need to take an action with the third one. Um, this user interface is is some is really powerful. As we are filtering in by some components, we can also exclude them from the analysis. So, okay, I want to see the rest of the components. The rest are not that critical, but I want to get the picture without the key components. So, as I have I have I have here this filter, I can use the same filter and exclude these components. Okay, and everything gets updated, and we see at a glance that. The collaboration is happening in one of the components of our stack, and maybe, well, maybe in this one. So, um, as I said, this is using Open Search. Open Search is also open source. It is the fork the community created uh, based on the Elastic Stack. Uh, the Grimmer Lab uh, toolkit uh, uses use it, it, and uh, I'll I'll show you later how how the Grimmer Lab uh, uh, works. So, a um, couple of things more. Uh, we have also some filters here. So we may be interested in filtering by, by teams or repository. So for instance, uh, what, what is the activity of the team uh, Peterja, for instance? So doing this, we can see the activity of the Peterja team in the different repositories. Of course, the color is going to be, uh, it's going to be uh, the same in all of them because we are filtering by one of the teams. So we are going to get a single result. But at a, at a glance, we see where the Viteria team is being active. And um, I didn't mention it, but in the in the bottom right corner, we have the uh, some summary with, with commits, units, contributors, and line chains. Commits and line chains, I'm pretty sure that this is something that you've, you've seen in many different roles. What is really interesting is that uh, we are able to, to have the number of units or organizations and the number of contributors. And uh, number of contributors may seem something simple, but it is not. Because uh, as soon as you start collecting data from different uh, platforms, you start having many different accounts for each contributor, even in your own organization. So uh, you need a way to create unified profiles to, to mark all these duplicates or secondary uh, secondary accounts as a single contributor, okay? And with this uh, product, with the Grimmar Lab 
uh, toolkit, you can do this not only with one data set, you can do it with all the data sets. So uh, using this product, you can really know the number of people collaborating to, to a project or a community. So um, we are uh, answering now uh, what is, the, what is the, the change in the last six months for some components. Let's have a look now at the connections of the different of the different teams. For this, we're going to use a network graph. And it is going to take like 15 seconds to load. So I can get some coffee. OK. So um, what we see here is a network graph. Uh, the blue nodes represent people, contributors. The yellow is rectangles represent repositories. So um, there is one node per contributor and the number of edges, the number of links, uh, represent the number of, of repositories this person contributes to. So for instance, this contributor is making commits to a single repository, okay? Again, we are using a time frame. So we are starting the last 12 months. So all these folks are doing contributions mainly to this repository, only to this one. Here, we are analyzing the, the Git datasets, but we can analyze the Git dataset, GitLab, GitHub, Stack Overflow. There are many different platforms supported. There are more than 15. Um, and you can also do it with the overall data, okay? But here, I want you to, uh, to get something simple. I want you to, to, to understand uh, the interactions in the, in the code, in the Git commits. So those folks, are committing to this repository and only to this one. So at a glance, if we zoom out, we see networks here that are not really connected, okay? So this is a silo. So if we zoom in, we see here that these two folks, by the way, one of them is me, <laughs> these two folks, and the other one is my colleague, Miguel Angel. These two folks are collaborating to the, to the SQLs repository, and they are not connected to the, to the rest of the organization. So it means that the collaboration here uh, is, is not happening, okay? So uh, for, for this example, uh, uh, we are imagining that these two folks uh, work for the same team, okay? Uh, as I have fake data, uh, I can show you also the organizations, the teams of these folks, but to, 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 to offer you something simple, uh, I prefer not to add more complexity. But uh, so in this example, we have here a silo and we have the opposite scenario. We have here repositories where the collaboration is happening and we see many, many links between them, okay? So when we want to foster collaboration, we want to improve the collaboration, we want to get more people like these ones, okay? They act, they, they, they uh, behave like bridges between, between different groups. So they, they collaborate in different places. And the more people connected to more repositories, the more connected the network is. And uh, by the way, the, the size of the node represents the activity. And here, I'm not filtering out the bots, and some of them will be bots. For instance, this is a bot. But this is something that we can also do with the, with the identity database. So, um, uh, on the on the right on the right side of the dashboard, we have some filters. We can filter by by component or repository. We see here some some numbers with the number of contributors, teams, and commits. And below that, we see uh, some fake team names. If we are interested in, for instance, seeing um, the the collaboration in in one of the repositories only, we can filter by this repository, and everything gets filtered. But we can maybe we can uh, uh, we want to do the opposite we can exclude exclude this repository from the analysis we can also do this so we get the same network without this repository and the interaction with the rep this repository so uh i have 6 minutes so let me uh let me provide you some data some knowledge about how this this works By the way, I, I, I forget to, to show you something. So uh, uh, this is just an example dashboard with a uh, number of people sending, uh, uh, submitting issues, GitHub issues, submitting PRs and submitted commits over time. And here we have the same people 
with some uh, uh, team names and some uh, overall numbers. Um, I mentioned before that it is key to have uh, this unified profile, so we we count only once the contributors, and uh, this is done because we have added in a, a separate identities data set, and we have a different uh, user interface to, to deal with that. So for instance, if we, uh, let me filter by the Viteria team, and let me show you the data from my colleague, Georg, for instance. So uh, this user interface, uh, by the way, we, we just launched a new one, and it is part of the community. It is open source again, but I didn't have I, I didn't have the time to deploy it in my local in my local machine in my machine. Sorry. So uh, this is the information we have from Georg, and all the records here, all the rows here, are different accounts that Georg is using in the different platforms. And so with this identity data set, with this tool, which is uh, which uh, name is Hort Sorting Hats, as in Harry Potter. Uh, with this tool, we are able to group those accounts in a single profile for Georg with a, a unique identifier, which is this hash. And we are able to assign this profile to different organizations or teams. In this case, we are doing it with organizations. So Georg was working for the University of Nebraska until he uh, joined Viterja. And this information is can, can, be, can be used by the dashboard. So in the dashboard, you can see that some folks have different organizations because they move from different organizations or teams. So uh, in the last three minutes, let me show you at a glance how Grimalak works. So basically, Grimalak gets information, gets data from uh, different platforms. We cover more than 15, GitHub, uh, mainland list, uh, Git, com Git commits, obviously, Fabricator, um, GitLab, Slack, Stack Exchange, I mean, Stack Overflow, et cetera. So we get all the information and we store it in what we call the, the raw data storage. And for that, we use the open search, uh, search engine. From this raw data, which is basically all the information we can get from the different APIs, we extract the identities information. And so we get the names, emails, and usernames from all the contributors. And we try to unify them with some algorithms. So in this example, uh, we have uh, names from a contributor which profile is already created, which is James Doe. But before we do that, we have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different uh, accounts. So if we don't, if we don't, if we don't do this merging, we have like nine contributors of the project, and it is not possible to see the activity of this person in all the the platforms at the same time. Okay. Uh, as happens with the contributor, with the, with the team member, happens with the team. We need to unify the profile of the team member in order to count uh, the, the, the activity and to track the activity, track the activity of the teams and organizations. So without doing this, it is not possible to know the real activity of the contributor, uh, when the contributor is joining a project, because we, we may have duplicates, they are using different accounts, even in Git, people are using different names and different uh, um, email addresses. Uh, we cannot know, for instance, the, the actual activity of a team. So as soon as we extract all the information from, from, the, from the IPs about the identities and we do this grouping, we, uh, we create what we call the rich data. And the rich data is basically what we what you saw in, uh, on the dashboard. Okay, so with this enriched data, Grimoire Lab provides the dashboard, which is uh, provided using the open search user interface. At Abiterja, we both provide the dashboard, and we also provide some some reports. And in case you want to start playing with Grimoire Lab, this is the the best way to start now. Uh, this is not the latest version. This is the the stable version. The latest version has the new sorting hat uh, interface, which is pretty cool, which supports teams and units, etc. But uh, I didn't have the time to work on it, and we still need need a couple of weeks to update the documentation. So that's all from my side. Uh, time for questions. <laughs> 